Hello, and welcome back to Introducing Persistence. Congratulations on your persistence to get this far in the tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to write a test method for the convert methods and then write our XML convert methods using the Xtreme library packages. Then, we'll run our tests to make sure our methods work correctly. Here, we have the My Utilities test class open for editing. In the last lesson, we created a method called CreateMyLibrary to make it easy to create a MyLibrary object with books and people already in it. Now we can write our test method as follows. We start with the annotation at test to tell it's a test method. Then we declare the method public void convert to XML, no arguments. Then the first line is to create a my library object called start my library, and we set it equal to the create my library method. So we create our standard library. We'll give ourselves a little more room. Then we create a string called test XML out, and then we set that to the results of our new method, myutilities.convert to XML. Now remember this method hasn't been written yet. And we're going to convert the start my library object to this XML string. Then we create a new my library object called end my library and we set it equal to the result of the my utilities convert from XML method. We'll move this down so we can see it better. Now we do our assert statements. Our first statement is assert equals test and my library dot get name. So we're just asserting that the name of the end my library is test. Then we do assert equals two, and then we do end my library dot get books dot size. So we're saying that this, there are two elements in the get books array list. Then we'll copy and paste that line and change get books to get people. And again, we're asserting that there are two person objects in the get people array list. And then finally, now this is a little tricky, we're going to assert equals Fred and my library dot get books dot get zero. So we're going to get the first element in the books, and then we're going to say get person dot get name. So we're saying that the first book is checked out to a person named Fred. Now, in looking at the create my library, we forgot to add the checkout, so we're going to do up in the create my library method ml.checkout book b1 to p1. And then we'll save. This is pretty straightforward. We're creating a new my library object called start my library using our create my library method. Then we save that my library object to a string called test XML out using our new convert to XML method. Now this method hasn't been written yet. Then we create a new my library object called end my library. Again using convert from XML with the argument test XML out, which is the string we created up here. Then we basically do four assert statements where we're testing that the end my library has the same contents that the start my library has. We check the name is equal, we check that there's the same number of books, the same number of people, and then in this last line we string together several methods where we get the books list, then we get the first book from the first from the books list. Then we get the person for that book, and then we get that person's name. And up here, where we checked out 
the first book to the person named Fred, we're making sure that that is true in the NMyLibrary object. Now this test method doesn't check every possible way in which two MyLibrary objects might be different, but it gives us a pretty good spot check. If you like, you could add tests for the contents of each book and each person object on your own. Now, as we would expect, we have compiler errors. This is because, using the test first approach, we are trying to execute methods we haven't written yet. Now Eclipse makes it very easy to identify compiler errors and warnings. This red X decoration indicates that there's a compiler error in this class being edited. If we go to the Package Explorer, we see the same decoration on the project, indicating there are one or more compiler errors in the project. If we expand this out, we can see the folder, the package, the class, and the method that have errors. Now, let's write the XML convert methods. First, we'll get Quick Fix to create the method stubs for us, just like we've done in the past. So if we maximize the My Utilities test, we'll click on the first error, Control-1, double-click to create the method. It creates the method over here in My Utilities. We'll save that, use the back arrow to go back, and now we see the first error is gone. We'll click on the second error, Control-1. Here we want to take the second option because we want to create the method convert from XML string. Double click. Again, it goes over, creates the method in My Utilities. We'll save that. Go back to My Utilities test. And it's cleaned up that error. If we double click, we can see that all of the compiler error decorations are gone in the Package Explorer as well. So now we're ready to go to My Utilities. We'll open that up for editing, and we're ready to write our methods. Now after all the work we've done to get to this point, the actual convert to XML is just two lines of code as follows. First we're going to change this variable to just call it ML. Then we'll delete the method stub that we had. Then the first line we're going to create a new extreme object and we'll call it extreme in lowercase. And inside the constructor we're going to create a new DOM driver object. And we'll talk about this in a minute. Then in the second line we're just going to return extreme dot to XML and then the ML, our parameter. So first let's clean up our code. So we use quick fix to add in this import statement. And then let's look at our import statements really quick. We can see, expand this, that we added this import statement automatically when we typed the first line of the method. And then this is the import statement we just added for the DOM driver. We'll come back to that in a minute. So this first line creates a new extreme object called extreme. And that's needed so that we can access the methods of this class. Then the second line does the actual work. We use the toXML method of the extreme object to convert the MyLibrary object to an XML string. Now, of course, behind the scenes, this method is doing a lot of work to create this XML string, but we're just tapping into it with this one line of code. Now, how did we know how to use the Xtreme class to write this code? In this case, we just read the tutorial on the Xtreme website. Here, we've opened up the Xtreme codehouse.org website and we're going to click on this two minute tutorial link. And If we look at this it gives us instructions and example code for how to use the Xtreme program library. Now one of the things here is that if we use this form of the constructor with the new DOM driver in the constructor 
then we eliminate the need for a second JAR file. Now, the disadvantage is that the conversion to and from XML will be a little bit slower. For our purposes, we'll take the slower performance so we don't need an extra JAR file when we deploy the application. Now, in a real life program, we might decide otherwise. Now, let's go back to Eclipse and write the convert from XML method. This is slightly more complicated as follows. First, we're going to change the variable name to make it more descriptive. We'll call it XML string. And the first thing we'll do is my library ML equals null. We'll just create a new my library object and set its initial value to null. Then we're going to do the same thing we did before, create a new extreme object, call it extreme, and in the constructor we're going to do the same thing, new DOM driver, just like we did before. Now this is a little different. We're going to create an object called obj, and we're going to set that equal to xstream.fromxml xml string, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Then we're going to say if obj instance of my library, then we're going to convert obj into a my library object. We say ml equals parentheses my library obj, and then we return my library. Then we do control s to save. So let's go over this method. We want to return a my library object, so this first line just creates a new my library object and sets it equal to null. The second line is exactly the same as we did up here. Now this third line does the work. However, this method extreme from XML doesn't know what type of object is contained in the XML string. So it doesn't know that there's a my library object in there. So it returns an object, not a particular kind of object. So we declare object obj, and that's what's going to get the value from converting XML string back into a Java object. Now, we want to return a my library object, and if we use this method correctly, XML string is going to have a my library object in it. So this next section of code does that. In the if statement, we say if the obj object is an instance of my library, meaning that this will return a true if obj can be converted into a my library object, then we do what's called a cast statement where we say the my library variable ml equals a cast of obj into a my library object. And then in any case, we return ml. So if this works successfully, ml will be a my library object that has the value of this xml string. Now this if statement with a cast is a very common operation in Java. We check that the object is an instance of a particular class before we try to cast it to that class. That way we don't get an error. We know the cast will be successful. At this point, we're ready to run our test. So we'll go back to my utilities test. We can double click so we can see our view over here. And then we can go run, run as, JUnit test to run the My Utilities test. And it succeeds. And if we click down here, we can see that our new method, convert to XML, succeeds. At this point, we have methods that convert my library objects to and from strings. And we have methods that save and get strings from disk files. In the next lesson, we'll put these methods together to do the entire job of converting my library objects to and from XML disk files. This is the end of Lesson 7. I'm Mark Dexter saying, so long for now.